Today we're looking at the all-new Inco DM7502 Cheapo Manual Ranging Multimeter for your cheapo pleasure. Let's take a look. DM7502, what do you get? Well, first of all, you get a pretty cool looking box. Also get your Inco DM7502 manual. Not bad, not bad. It is basic, yes. It's not going to tell you how to use a multimeter, people. Get a lot of questions saying, oh, I got a manual, but it doesn't tell me how to use it. Well, you know what? That's really not what they're designed for. They're designed to let you know the specs of the meter itself. But fear not, I will be coming up with a multimeter tutorial at some point soon, I hope, because I've had so many requests for one. So, yeah, it's coming. It's coming, guys. Also get some test leads, a uh, Cat 4 600 volt rating and Cat 3 1000 volt. Um, PVC. A little on the short side, I would say, perhaps, but uh, yeah, they are nice size though. I gotta say they're they're bigger. They're not your standard cheapo test leads, because let's face it, this is a cheapo. Uh, I picked this up for about 20 bucks Canadian. Yeah, around $18, 17 US. So yeah, this is definitely in the cheapo zone. Now the test leads themselves are really sharp and they're a good size, they're a good size. They even have this sort of conical shape going on here at the tip, which, you know, I like, I like it. it, it it's an easy, easy lead to hold in your hand and I'm actually kind of impressed. So, good stuff. By the way, if you're new to the world of multimeters, fear not, we're here to help. A new feature to the channel is something called, yeah, you see it, quick tips. Basically, a quick tip on how to do a particular function with a multimeter. Hope you like it. And it even ships with a couple of AA alkaline batteries with the Inco branding. Gotta love it. Color of the boot is definitely interesting. It's not so much a fluke yellow, but it's close. And it's not really a Keysight orange either. Uh, it's somewhere in between. Uh, it's it's unique, but definitely closer to And fluke. when I say identical, I'm not kidding. Look at that. We suddenly have an off yellow Habitest. Cool. Let's do a quick side by side to the Habitest HD118A. Popular meter, number one in the cheapo zone. Uh, yeah, it is identical body. Um, auto ranging, manual, buttons themselves. Once again, max min, flashlight, function, hold, all the same. Uh, even the selector switch, if you take a close look, is basically the same selector switch. So this really is the same unit, but with slightly different programs. Oh, yeah, let's just peel away that protective layer. Always appreciated when we see it on a multimeter. Now, if we take a look at the display itself, hmm, notice anything? Yeah, a lot more chunky funky on the Inco than the Habitest. Habitest has that sort of diminutive, but nonetheless unique style font. Um, not so on the Inco. So, you know, mileage may vary up to you, personal preference, really. Um, I don't know, I don't really have one myself. If I had to choose, I would probably go with the Habitest just because you can get more on that display. But uh, yeah, the display itself is different. Also in AC millivolts, you can tell another big difference here. We have the dual display on the Habitest compared to the singular on the Inco. Other than that though, standard fit and finish, uh, good quality, nice plastics used, have a pretty decent tilt stand again, identical once again to the Habitat series. Selector switch as well, has a nice tactile feel, clackety clack, clickety click, hits the ranges with authority, I like it. Backlight is also slightly different on the Inco compared to the Habitest. Um, a little bit brighter. I don't know if it's necessarily better, but it does seem to last as well a few seconds longer, but, but not by much. Ugh. Why do they do that? Something else that is seriously lacking is the fact of the absence of a bar graph. Unlike the habit test, we have a bar graph. Um, not so on the Inco. That is sadly missed. So as you can see, a lot of similarities to the habit test, but it's definitely a meter unto its own. Uh, looks a little bit different, acts a little bit different, reacts a little bit differently. Let's see how it actually performs. Groovy. Let's take a closer look at the selector switch starting at the midnight or off position. Volts DC up to 1000 volts. Volts AC up to 750, including frequency. Frequency and duty cycle. AC amps up to 10 amps. DC amps up to 10 amps. Battery tester, 9 volt and 1.5 volt. Capacitance up to 100 millifarad. Diode test. Continuity. Resistance up to 60 mega ohm. Non-contact voltage and live detect. Top left of the meter, we're starting off with the function switch, followed by the hold, max min, and finally the flashlight backlight. On the meter, you can see we have our LED illuminated jack inputs. 
On the far left, we have our high current input up to 10 amps. Below that, the milliamps up to 600. On the far right, we have our common, and above that, we have our positive input. Capacitance, diode, continuity, voltage resistance, frequency, duty cycle, and live We're looking wire. at a DC precision voltage reference now. Uh, to get there, we're gonna move the dial to the volts DC. You can see we have that flashing input at the top. That tells us that's where the input goes. 5.000 is what we want. 5.003 is what we get. Hey, definitely in spec and looking good. We're sitting in resistance mode right now. 100 ohm is what we want. 100.2 is what we get, and that is pretty darn good. Now, do we have any resistance on those test leads? 0.2 of an ohm, 0.1 of an ohm, and nothing. So, hey, excellent. 100K coming up is 99.8. Oh, that is really accurate. Let's go right to the 1K, shall we? 1.1, 1.0K. Oh, beauty, beauty. And let's try 10 ohm. Oh yeah, and sitting at 10 ohm right now, oh, you can't do much better than that. Okay, well, finally, let's try one ohm. Hey, why not, why not? Wow, 1.0 ohm. This is definitely one accurate little beast. Loving it. It's a quick to range, sitting at eight mega ohm right now, down to seven, six, five, three mega ohm, finally one mega ohm. Hey, not too shabby. This is very nice. Next up is diode mode. As you can see, we're sitting in the diode range. Let's start off with a standard diode. 0.558 forward voltage drop, looking good. Okay, here we go, starting off with that red LED. It is lit with a forward voltage drop over to the yellow. Same, the green, perfect, the blue. Yes, and finally the white. Awesome, five for five in the LED genre. Oh, I'm loving this thing more and more. Output voltage in diode mode is a solid 3.2 volts. Very nice. Next up, it's continuity. Oh, I love this time of the review. Stock default test probes, three, two, one, and oopsie, we're not in continuity. That's better. It is latched fairly loud. Gets about 80%, I'd say. Let's try the probe, probe masters. masters. Honestly, I don't see any difference. In fact, can it even be a tad bit slower? That is just weird, weird. Seventy-three decibels, maximum output volume in continuity. Not bad, not bad. Now the DM seven five zero two also comes with a battery tester, and a lot of people think this is just you know all fluff, but it is actually a useful feature. Um, Note in point, here's a nine volt battery. Let's test it in standard DC mode. So it's coming up as, yeah, look at that, 9.3 volts. Hey, it's a good battery, right? It's a good battery. Wrong. And here's how I'll prove it. We'll switch the dial to nine volt and let's test that battery again. Now it's gonna be putting a load on the battery. And there you go, 0 0.04 of a volt. This battery's no good. It's absolute garbage because it cannot generate any power. So, so classic difference of when a nine volt test with a load can actually make a big, big difference in the overall scheme of things. Already 100 millifarad, 100 mi thousand microfarad is the claim to fame for the Inco uh, in capacitance mode. Is it actually going to do it? Can we get that high? Well, let's find out. Here we go. Bada boom, bada bing. We're in millifarad mode already. And, oops, that was my fault. Let's do it again, sorry. Millifarad mode, it's thinking. We have that nice visual indicator, always a bonus on any multimeter, instead of just seeing like dead air. And there we are, 99.50. That was pretty darn fast. Awesome. In AC volts right now, and just like the Habit test in the high voltage mode, we have a really nice amber screen displaying the fact that we are in basically danger mode. We're in high voltage mode. So that is a very cool feature, 120 volts. AC and yeah, looking good. Now the other nice thing about this is we can also select our frequency. So we hit the function switch 
and 60 hertz is the frequency. Hit that function switch again and it brings us back into the AC volts. All right, let's have a quick voltage showdown. We've got that super accurate Klein on the left. In the middle, we have to start the show, the Inco DM7502. On the right, the venerable Hapotest HC118, number one in the cheapo round. Here we go, starting off at 1.00 volts. And there we are, 1.00 for the Klein, 1.01 for the Inco, and 1.009 for the Habitest. Up and away, we are gonna go to a whopping five volts. Five volts even. 5.00 for the Klein, 5.00 for the Inco, and 5.001 for the Habitest. Alrighty, up and away. Let's take it up to 20 volts now. 20 volts DC, actually 20.01 according to the Sigland power supply. Look at that. Klein, spot on as always. What else is new, Klein? You're so predictable. 20.01 for the Klein, 20.01 right there with you. 75.02 and 19.98 for the Habitest. Okay, finally, we're gonna max things out. Yes, we are out in max land, 32.01. 0, 1 volts and check it out 32.01 for the Klein 32.01 for the Inco and 31.97 for the Habitest so holy moly cannoli it is a win-win we have a tie between the Klein and the Inco oh my god I was not expecting that excellent take a quick look at DC current sitting at half an amp 500 milliamps According to the Siglint, coming in as 480 milliamps or so on the Inco. Okay, let's take it up. One amp even, coming in as 0 0.99, 1.2 amps. And look at that, we have that nice amber high voltage indicator again, or high current in this case, 1.18 amps, showing up as 1.2 for the Siglint. Let's max it out here with the one channel, coming in at 3.2, 3.17 for the Inco. Nice, oh, crisp, oh, I love that amber screen. And that's always a, a good thing to know when you're dealing uh, in the danger zone. Excellent. All right, sitting in NCV mode, non-contact voltage. Here we go, 120 volts. And yeah, look at that. So we actually have a visual as well as the audible indicator and we have a low and high signifier. Not bad, not bad. Now we have it in our live wire mode and let's just try probing, shall we? And you can see indeed it is able to detect that voltage. Something else I like is the fact that when you turn on the backlight, you actually are not enabling the flashlight. So to get the flashlight going, you gotta hold down and then you get the flashlight. So nice, nice, a lot of multimeters today. Um, flashlight is invoked as soon as you turn on the backlight. So excellent. Okay, it is teardown time. Guess what? Wow. You can tell we have a lot in common. Habo test 118A on the left. Here is the Inco, and man, oh man, they are almost identical. Neither multimeter has any shielding, as is blatantly obvious, but well, what the heck else is new? Okay, let's start off with those input jacks, and you can tell they are identical, split variety, nothing new going on here. The fuses themselves are identical, six by 32 millimeter, and on the milliamp side, we have a 600 milliamp fuse, 10 amp ceramic on the high current. Each have identical PTCs on the voltage side. We have a diode clamp going on over here. Um, no MOVs to speak of whatsoever. Moving up here are those battery connectors, the spring connectors over here that make contact with the terminals of the battery compartment itself, but little else going on. Moving up the line, the only obvious difference between the Habotest and the Inco is the absence of that uh, HT16C22 LCD control driver. Uh, it ain't here, it is not on the Inco. Everything else is identical right down to the EEP ROM, which of course is the T24C02A. It's a good one. Crystal oscillator, buzzer, LED, um, not much else going on. But if we take a look at that NCV, once again, you can tell we have that filament jutting out of the top right over here. And that is what is giving us that not so bad. I call it a so-so NCV performance. Uh, definitely we've seen a lot better. Thoughts of Inco. DM7502 manual ranging multimeter. 
Price versus performance, this thing blows most of them out of the water. This is a darn good, highly accurate multimeter. Now you might be a fan in the manual ranging camp, and if that's the case, then you're gonna have to sadly move on. But if you don't mind a manual ranging meter, it's hard to do much better than the DM7502. It looks great performance. Um, it is very close to its HT118 uh, DNA. At the end of the day, it's hard not to recommend the Inco DM7502 if you're looking for a manual ranging multimeter that won't break the bank and that can offer a lot of bang for the proverbial buck. Hey, the Inco DM7502 gets a solid four out of five stars. Thanks for watching this review, everybody. Plenty more coming. I've got that brand new Unity UT8805E multimeter. It's gonna have that coming up really soon, as well as the Kai Beats Week, slight delay, no fear. It is on the way as well. Hey, lots of good stuff coming. Glad you guys are enjoying that retro tech. We have a lot of vintage multimeters coming up as well. Hey, till the next one, keep on testing.